everybody. My oh my, it's been a long time. Not at all what I intended, but sometimes life gets in the way. It's not that I've been sick or working full time or even looking after a family. It's just that, I don't know, creatively, there are some days where there are no ideas, including ideas for video. And I've had a big slump lately, but that's another story. Today is different. At minimum, at minimum, I had to do a video with my overgrown COVID lockdown haircut to memorialize what things are like today. Our location is opening up again next week and hopefully my curly locks will be gone in about a week. It's interesting to see family members and friends in the same situation. We all look like we're from the 1970s. It brings back a lot of memories for sure. But our waistlines are nowhere near what they used to be. And that's a whole different discussion as well. Anyway, back to business. One of my favorite landscape photographers, Mark Denny, recently released a really interesting video about his creative journey and what it took to get him to where he is today. He is a full-time professional landscape photographer. How many people can say something like that today? Until about 2019, he was in the corporate world. But sometimes fate brings you to a crossroads and sometimes you decide to do that yourself. In his case, I think it was a bit of both. His story isn't the only one that I've been hearing lately either. Vlogs and podcast episodes from folks like Peter Zelinka, who went from an IT professional to full-time astrophotography, and Leah Judson, who packed up her life and headed out to photograph and tell the stories of the people of the United States. Links to all of these are in the description below. They're a really interesting study. Mark's story is particularly interesting to me. It made me think a bit about my own journey and how I got to be in front of you even today. It's not at all what I had planned, except for the part about loving photography. But I took up photography before there were digital cameras and personal computers, and I never anticipated in my wildest dreams that it could be anything more than my own interest. But now I can easily share images and experiences with others and it keeps my mind and my heart happy. Unlike Mark and unlike many folks that I admire, I grew up with an ethic that work was work and hobbies were hobbies. You could never expect to make a living from the latter. Sadly, being in the business world gave me physical and financial comforts, but never any intellectual or emotional fulfillment. I always spent my own time on things that were totally unrelated to what I did for a living. And I thought that this was the way it was supposed to be. Mark's story is about doing the same initially, but then making the decision to do what he loved full time. It was a scary choice, particularly with a family to support. But it was one that he had to make and he did. It took a while, several years, but now the opportunities are there for him, even if it is a bit less lucrative than corporate life. The most interesting part of his story though, is how he views work now. You've all heard the expression, do what you love and it will never be work. You'll never work a day in your life. That's his point of view now. Strangely though, doing what you love often means doing it all the time. <laughs> you do it because you love it. You're constantly thinking about it. You're constantly tweaking it. You're constantly perfecting it, often to the detriment of spending time with family and friends. It may not feel like work to you, but to those around you, it takes up more time than work ever did. On that front, Mark and I are the same. I don't take photographs to earn a living, but I do it just as aggressively and just as passionately as Mark does. It's on my mind all the time. I'm always planning, always tweaking, always learning something new. In my case though, I think it's an issue of making up for lost time and I'm trying to do it as best as I can. 
Many of my generation and many in my situation have taken up photography as a pastime after retirement. I belong to clubs where like-minded people get together for that very reason. But there seems to be a difference in their approach and mine. Many of them do it for a bit of entertainment and a way to spend time with friends. I do that too, but I also do it because I need the creative outlet. I've got to have that. But that means I do have to pay more attention to the same things that Mark has identified in his professional career. Balance is something I think I've sacrificed a bit. Well, actually, I think we've all done that over the past 18 months. I certainly need to reconnect with people again. I need to participate in shared experiences again, and I need to maybe spend more time enjoying the actual moment. That said, I also acknowledge that there are differences in his journey and mine. There is no right or wrong, absolutely. There is no right or wrong, but I must say that I envy the bravery of people like Mark and Peter and Leah who have made the decision that self-interest and self-fulfillment can indeed coexist with earning a living. Oh my goodness, I'm in awe of them. I've not been able to do it. I really wish I maybe had tried a little harder. I don't know. I see driven artists like Joe McNally or Beethoven or Ray Charles who did it because they had to. Being an artist was who they were. That's not the case for me. It's not the foundation of my character, but rather the pinnacle. It's something I aspire to. So it's a little bit different situation. I guess the bottom line is that you have to be what you have to be. The best arrangement is to make it your choice and not someone else's choice. My parents came to this country after the last world war and worked at whatever jobs they could in order to provide food for us, shelter for us, and an opportunity to grow and be part of this society. They made it possible for me to make my own choices. And for that, I will be forever grateful. I also thank Mark for all of his insights. I love the opportunity to be more self-aware always, always, always. I encourage everyone to find their niche, whether as a career or as a hobby. As we all know, life can throw a lot of curveballs at us. It certainly has in the last 18 months. Learning how to catch them instead of having them hit you in the face might actually be fun. But don't wait to do it. Don't do what I did. If you have the least inkling of wanting to pursue a dream, do it. Just do it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I don't promise to put out a video every week, but hopefully I can get a little better at it than I've been in the last few months. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for your support. Thank you.